Hello everyone and welcome to Noodle Journey, your destination for detailed and informative reviews of the Instant Noodle universe. And today I am soldiering on through Lotus Foods Instant Noodle products with this millet and brown rice ramen with red miso soup. Before we get started, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this content. Uh, so yeah, does anyone who's binged my content remember this brand? I bought five of these Lotus Foods varieties way back when to review for my gluten intolerant co-worker. And it's been quite a while since my last review of them, which was their turmeric curry soup. And while that one wasn't horrible, the white miso one I reviewed before that is still in my bottom five ever. And surprisingly, it wasn't the noodles that were the issue either time, it was the soup they came with. If you want gluten-free instant noodles made in the U.S., there's a few options out there, and Lotus Foods is at the forefront, along with Mr. Lee and Thai Kitchen from McCormick, and none of them seem to be, let's say, favorably reviewed from what I've seen online. But I must persevere because, well, I paid for these things and I have to review them, and at some point I'm probably going to pay for those other brands too, just maybe not anytime soon. Now I have three varieties of Lotus Foods noodles left, and so I picked this red miso one for two reasons. First, I'm curious if and how they figured out a way to ruin red miso. I know, I shouldn't judge, this might actually be good, but I have been hornswoggled by Lotus Foods before. And the second reason is that this was featured on a list I saw recently of the top five and bottom five healthiest ramen varieties on eatthis.com. And this was number four of the top varieties. And of course the bottom five are all loaded with fat and sodium, which makes them absolutely delicious. But you know, I'm not here to pretend that instant noodles aren't junk food. They are, but hopefully this one is a good balance of healthy and tasty if that blog is to be believed. At the risk of being too chatty, let's also talk about miso for a second. So it's a paste made from mostly fermented soybeans, rice, and salt. And if you've ever checked out the miso paste at your local supermarket, you may have noticed it comes in three varieties. There's white miso, which is mild and sweet, and was basically absent flavor-wise from the white miso soup I ate back in episode 10. There's yellow miso, which is a little funkier and earthier in taste, and is really good for glazing proteins and vegetables. And then there's red miso, which is the most pungent of the three, and is the one featured here and in other soups like the miso varieties from Nissan Rao, Maruchan Gold, and Marutai. So in theory, what I'm about to eat with this red miso soup should be a flavor bomb of funky soybeans. Let's see if that's true. Sodium check. Any miso should be pretty salty and um, 920 milligrams. That's not that salty, and so that is an immediate red flag with this. But let's power through it. So inside we've got these noodles made from millet and brown rice. Millet is a grain native to Asia and Africa, by the way, I had to look that up because I'm not very well read in the subject of grains. And then there's a soup packet. And in here we've got red miso powder, onion powder, seaweed, garlic, ginger, parsley, and chili pepper. At the very least, on paper, this all sounds nice. So I guess it's time to cook. I'll be right back. And here we go. The first thing I want to do before I get into the smell and the scoring of this is uh, mention that brick of noodles. Getting them to separate to this point, they're still pretty clumpy, was Herculean. Uh, these noodles are very dense, very sticky, did not want to come apart when they were boiling, and took a lot of teasing to get to this point. Now that being said, Lotus Foods noodles have never been the problem, uh, but just watch out if you want to buy this. They might need a little tough love to get apart. Uh, this actually smells very good. Uh, I'm impressed. It smells like red miso. It's got some nice chunks of seaweed, and somewhere in here I saw some chili flakes. So, yeah, I I'm cautiously optimistic at this point. Let's give this a whirl. Okay, let's get into the noodles first, because if you're gluten intolerant, this is one of the things you're going to be concerned about. They're pretty good, but they're also very firm. The direction said to cook for four minutes. I think four minutes might not actually be enough. Even though I like my noodles firm, these are very firm. They don't really taste like much, 
and they also don't cling to the broth very well. But there's nothing else really off-putting about them or the texture. I, I actually kind of like them. Uh, I'm going to give them a 7 out of 10. Now, as far as the spiciness is concerned, yes, there is chili pepper in here, but this is yet another one of those cases where I don't really taste anything hot. So if you're very, very sensitive to spicy things, I think this probably warrants, at most, a 1 out of 10 on the spice scale. This is pretty tame. And so let's talk about the overall flavor of this. I was optimistic having smelled it, and now I'm disappointed having tasted it. It smells like red miso. The miso flavor is here. The problem is there is no salt or sodium needed to amplify that miso flavor. And that may be a draw for you, but for me personally, I think this is just incredibly bland. Aside from that, these pieces of seaweed are decent. More than I was expecting, honestly, out of, out of one of these products. I noticed a couple tiny little pieces of carrot in here before, and I really mean a couple tiny pieces. I literally can't find one at this point. I don't think they're adding any particular flavor to this, and certainly very little texture. The onion powder in the ingredients does come through a little bit, but I'm not really getting any hint of garlic, ginger, parsley. None of that is really standing out. It's mainly just red miso in two cups of water, without the salty punch that you want from red miso. That being said, if you are looking for something low sodium and gluten free, um, this is probably the best one I've reviewed so far, which is a low bar, um, but it's something. And so with that in mind, throw some salt or MSG into this and it'll be fine. As it is, I'm going to give it a six out of 10 as an overall score. Okay, so this is not the complete disappointment that I thought it was going to be, but it's also not spectacular either. It's very middle of the road, and it is just a little bit bland for me. If this is what you're looking for in an instant noodle soup, by all means, try it. As for me, I don't ever need to buy this again, and uh, I think if you don't have any gluten or sodium issues, then just give this a complete skip. Still, the noodles are kind of interesting, and I could see there being a different application for them. In fact, I think Lotus Foods actually might sell these noodles on their own, uh, so if that interests you, you could experiment with them and not be totally disappointed. That's all for this episode. I do have two more Lotus Foods varieties in the queue, waiting to be reviewed someday. That will not be the next video, but, uh, you know, I'll work them in sometime soon and we'll see what we have. In the meantime, if you have any gluten-free noodle recommendations or if there's something else from Lotus Foods that I haven't reviewed yet that is way better than this, I'd really love to hear about it in the comments. Hope to see you next time on Noodle Journey.